all three corners healthy, how do you plan to divide the reps there? You know, it's it's just kind of a wait and see type thing as see how the rest of the week plays out. Um, and then obviously next week as well. Will it still be uh, Chris and Isaac splitting yeah, the one Yeah, it's too early to tell right now. But, uh, you know, I was real happy with the way those two played against Washington. So what you saw from Max Williams, did he earn any more opportunities? Yeah, Max is a good football player. I mean, he came in there and, and uh, did his job. And, and he's a guy that now that he's healthy that, that we can utilize a little bit uh, moving forward. But, you know, Greg played pretty well as too. Looking at your... What went wrong? In this game, what went right? What, what, did, what were you real happy with? Um, you, you know, they... I thought the guys did a nice job on third down. You know, they were 25%, I believe, on third down. They were a team that had been pretty good on third down. Um, you know, they're, they're a space team with pretty good athletes. Um, I was happy with uh, with that. I thought at times, you know, we got some pretty good, you know, got some pressure on the quarterback and got him off his spot to where he couldn't just have a, a you know, a clear launch point. Um, it was something that we wanted to get done. You mentioned that you had you goodbye to kind of go back and look at all five games. What are a couple of things that you really want to clean up moving forward? Uh, you know, I think that the the perimeter plays uh, that, that kind of happen here and there. You know, you tackle it for a two yard gain, and then there's one for 15 or 19 yards. Um, so those plays don't kill you, but they just they just kind of keep drives alive. And and uh, so I think you know playing with better eye control within the back seven, seeing those perimeter plays is probably one of the biggest things that, that uh, I want us to get a, get better at. Yeah, and what's the difference between a, a two-yard gain and a 19-yard gain for you know for you guys? Like, what, what, would, what would change that for you? Well, I mean, it's just we, we don't want many 19-yard gains. We really, really don't want any. So sure. they're obviously are getting a big chunk on, on one play. Um, but, we, you know, we'd like to be, you know, 3.2 or less on all run plays. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm wondering, you mentioned eye control. Is, is that what it all comes down to? Why that's happening? Uh, you know, because, yeah, sometimes we play it for, for no gain, and sometimes it, it spits out for maybe more than usual. And, and uh, you know, the fly sweeps, the crack tosses, you know, you put on any NFL film, that's what everybody's doing in the league right now. And uh, so it trickles down to the college game. And, um, you know, we just got to play it better on a more consistent basis. Does that really then only involve like linebackers and your outside ends? It's, it's a combination of everybody in the back seven, whether it be corners setting the edge, okay. depending on the coverage, or safeties coming up setting the perimeter. It's all based off what structure you have when, you, when they run that play, when you have that call, whether it's a, a safety force or corner force, or where the backers need to fit on it as well. What have been the, the positives for you from, from the defense? You know, I think the pressure on the quarterback, we've, we've been able to get, you know, fairly consistent pressure. Um, you know, this, we've left some sacks out there that I, that I think we should, I mean, we should have 10 more sacks than what we got. I think we have 13. Um, and then, you know, I've been happy with the third downs. Uh, third down, of, I think we're 35% on the year uh, in third down efficiency. And we played pretty good in the red zone, uh, you know, limited teams to field goals. And, and uh, when, when they get down in there, and I've been happy with the red zone play. Is there a tweak you can do to come up with that? I mean, I know it's just tack, tack yeah, on the Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we got to do a better job of not getting behind the quarterback, which puts us in a better angle to, to uh, tackle the quarterback when he does step up. And some of it's been uh, the quarterbacks have been a little better athlete maybe than the guys trying to tackle him. But some of it is, you know, being behind the quarterback, allowing him to step up, which creates second-level lanes and um, allows the quarterback to have some, some free access to go to get up the field. And we've played some pretty mobile quarterbacks, too. Um, we'll continue to play some. Are the rushes on the edge outside the tackle runs? That's, that's still a concern for you? Yeah, it's something we work on. Um, you know, the, the, the yards that happen outside the numbers, you know, we're, we're fairly stout in our front sevens when people try to get the ball on the perimeter. And, uh, I think our guys know that now, and, and we've identified it. And, Really had a chance to go back and, and you know on the bye week like this you really can slow down you're not so much worried about an opponent and say look here's something that continues to keep happening so when you recognize this formation maybe on this hash mark pretty good chance there's something maybe coming out here so um, just playing with better eyes and, and doing a better job of recognition why do you think that's been so difficult to fix so far uh, you know when you when you have different defenses there's there's uh, different defenses that set the perimeter and so when those plays come up um, you know, it's been hit or miss. Um, there's been some that haven't had, have been tackled for loss. So, but it's just when the perimeter changes, the guys have an understanding 
uh, a clear understanding who has the edge and to set the ball and turn it back inside. How have you seen EA progress in the course of the five games? Yeah, you know, I think um, it's been a little bit inconsistent. I think he's struggled at times uh, tackling. Um, he's, he's made some explosive tackles. Um, but I think he's getting a better feel playing into the boundary most of the time as the dime linebacker. He's used to playing, you know, most of his career has been in the middle. But uh, I've seen steady progress. There's things definitely that he knows he needs to get better at, and, and we've addressed those things this week. How specifically do you address that? Is that in practice or in film? Just in film, and, and um, you know, when you look at the cut-ups of the main calls that we make uh, defensively, the things we kind of hang our hat on, our bread and butter, where, you know, everybody should be right because we've repped it you know, 1,200 times since last May, or last spring. Um, and so those are the kind of things defensively, not only him, but everybody, uh, when, when there's a, certain things that are bread and butter, we've got to be in the right spots. Why do you think that disconnect happens if you've done it so many times? Uh, you know, offense is doing different things, maybe uh, changing formations uh, from doubles to trips or trips to doubles during the play, you know, with the different motions or moving people back on the snap. Um, can can Tend, tend to have you play with kind of loose eyes, as we say. What have you seen from Marlon so far this season? You know, he's probably been uh, our most consistent player. I mean, he's been really solid in there, uh, controlling his gap, getting off blocks, uh, transitioning versus the pass. Really happy with the way he's played. And I, like I said, I think he's probably playing more consistent than anybody we have right now. What's the plan for Jordan Isafa when he comes back healthy? Uh, we just got to wait and see, uh, see where he's at uh, when, it, when the time comes. But, uh, you know, we, we miss Jordan. He's a big part of our defense.